Disney Dreamlight Valley's largest story update has finally arrived, and it's loaded with exciting new features. Though, there's one mysterious feature in particular that has the community buzzing with speculation. Once again, the patch notes contained a redacted statement hinting at additional mysterious potatoes. Little did we realize that these potatoes and their corresponding potions would lead us to the most mysterious item of all, the Rainbow Potion. Upon receiving all six mysterious potions, they can be combined to craft this intriguing new concoction. And this concoction will grant us the ability to obtain Dreamlight Valley's most unique companion, the Rainbow Fox. Before we get started, I'd like to mention that I'm a small full-time content creator, so pressing the like button on this video can make a huge difference for me. If you would like to join our community and play the update live with friends, consider joining my Twitch channel. I'll put the link in the video description. Consider subscribing for more Disney Dream Life Valley and gaming content, and with that, let's get started. Now, let's begin the steps to recover Dreamlight Valley's newest spuds and move one step closer to our ultimate prize, the Rainbow Fox. First off, it's important for me to mention that players must redeem the gold potato in order to find and discover the other mysterious spuds. As of Dreamlight Valley's most recent update, the gold potato is no longer redeemed with a redemption code. Instead, players can find the gold potato in Scrooge's shop. Simply walk behind the counter and interact with the safe if you have not yet claimed your gold potato. Further, players will need the gleaming gold potion, the raging red potion, the electrifying orange potion, the brilliant blue potion, the royal purple potion, and the new crystalline green potion in order to craft the rainbow potion. Today's video will primarily focus on obtaining the crystalline green and the royal purple potions. However, if you're looking to obtain the other potions, you're in luck. I have videos for each potion on my channel and I've placed links to each of the videos in the video description down below. If you're missing any of the previous potions, I highly recommend obtaining those first and then returning to this point of the video. If you happen to have all four previous potions, then it's time to embark on our journey. Let's start with a few preparations I'd like to recommend. First off, go ahead and clear your inventory, aside from some food, a miracle growth elixir, and the four potions we acquired in the past. Keep in mind, you don't have to bring these potions along, but you'll only get one chance to see them all together in your inventory. So for me, it's definitely worth it. Now it's time to begin the quest to obtain the purple potion. Hidden within the chamber in Frosted Heights lays a dark portal. If you have not completed or started Olaf's quest, you will need to do so to access this portal. Upon approaching the portal, you'll notice something different. The option to speak with it, or should I say, through it. Players will find themselves greeted by a mysterious presence, which will proceed to ask you to choose one of three words ten times. Each of the chosen words can be found hidden in purple experiment notes scattered throughout the valley. If you'd like to jump ahead and see exactly what each of the chosen words are, feel free to skip to the next chapter of this video. However, if you're like me and you find yourself to be a bit of a completionist, Stick around and we'll go over the location of each of the 10 books that reveal all 10 correct answers. The first choice prompted from the orb has players choose between pumpkin, potato, and cucumber. The corresponding book can be found near the bottom of the royal staircase that connects the meadow to the plaza. The second request is a choice between frying pan, chef hat, and book. The corresponding note can be found in the plaza in the southwest corner of the Wishing Well platform. The third request is between nightmares, thoughts, and dreams. The corresponding note can be found on the grand staircase that leads from the peaceful meadow to Dazzle Beach. The fourth request is between Higgadus Figgadus, Abracadabra, and Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo. The corresponding note can be found in the bottom of the left hand corner of the meadow closest to the glade entrance. The fifth request is between Salmon, King Swordfish, and Fugu. The corresponding note is found in the sunlit plateau at the river's end where the waters flow down to the glade. The sixth request is between Crystal, Diamond, and Garnet. The corresponding book can be found inside the chamber within Frost and Heights that contains this mysterious presence and portal. The seventh request is between mining, foraging, and fishing. The corresponding book can be found within the cave that we met Ursula, located in the northern part of Dazzle Beach. The eighth request is between the forgotten, the forgetting, 
and the ruler. The corresponding note can be found on the second floor of Scrooge McDuck's shop. The ninth request is between apple, blueberry, and raspberry. The corresponding note can be found within the Vitalis Mines of Sunlit Plateau. Proceed past the shimmering pool that brought life to the brilliant blue potion and turn right at the tunnel's end. The final choice is between Dreamlight, Magic, and Nightthorns. The corresponding note can be found on the left-hand side of the pier located in Dazzle Beach. Now that you've seen the location of each experiment note, you know all 10 answers to provide the mysterious presence within the portal. The correct answers in order are as follows. Potato, Book, Dreams, Higgadus Figgadus, Fugu, Crystal, Foraging, The Forgetting, Raspberry, and Magic. Now that you have your purple potato, Simply head to your closest crafting station, combine the purple potato with an empty glass vial, and the royal purple potion is yours. Now there's just one more potion to obtain, the crystalline green potion. This potion can be quite a bit trickier than the royal purple potion, as there is no list we can search up for a shortcut, and is in some ways similar to the demands of the orange potion. Scattered throughout various bodies of water lay 16 emerald bottles. Each bottle contains a small emerald sliver, which we will need to create the jade crystal. Before we begin this next step, there are a few very important tips you'll need to consider. Fishing up these emerald bottles is not simple for everyone. Players may need to reposition themselves several times. You'll know you've landed a good cast when a gold ring prompts you in the waters beside the bottle. If you don't get the gold ring upon casting, reposition. Eventually, you'll bring in your emerald prize. Keep in mind, you may need to move some decor to spot the bottles within the water. Lastly, these bottles do not stack. So, if you didn't follow my previous advice about emptying your inventory, you can open up the bottles as you fish them up and retrieve the emerald sliver that lays inside. These slivers are stackable, so if your pockets are a bit full, you can use this to your advantage. Now let's go over the locations of each bottle. The Forest of Valor, Frosted Heights, and Forgotten Lands each contain only one emerald bottle within them. The Peaceful Meadow and the Sunlit Plateau both hold two bottles, while the Glade of Trust holds four emerald bottles, and Dazzle Beach holds the remaining five, for a total of 16 emerald bottles. We'll start with the Forest of Valor. Located in the northern part of the biome, the first emerald bottle is rather easy to spot and can be fished out of the waters right next to Elsa's ice cave. Next, we'll retrieve the bottle from Frosted Heights. Our second bottle can be found just north of the river bend located in the center of the biome's river. Fishing along the right side of the river should find it to be an easy catch. For the third bottle, we will travel to the Forgotten Lands. Located in the northwest pond, players will notice a solitary bottle. This emerald bottle is located towards the upper part of the pond and is easy to fish out when casting from the right-hand side. Our next two emerald bottles are located in the Peaceful Meadow. The first is located on the southern end of the meadow's largest pond, and the second is located on the middle right of the smaller northern pond. For the larger pond, it's easiest to approach the bottle from the south. For the smaller northern pond, approaching from the bottom or right-hand side should suffice. On to the Sunlit Plateau. The first bottle can be spotted in the center of the river bend, while the second lays in the bottom of the Sunlit Plateau's pond. The bottle in the river bend is easy to fish out from the right-hand side of the river. Just position yourself along the inside corner and cast out from there. The pond itself is a bit more simple. Just position yourself anywhere near the bottom right and cast in the direction of the bottle. Our next four bottles can be found in the Glade of Trust. The first can be found in the top left section of the biome close to the Sunlit Plateau's waterfall. The second is in the southwest river bend located close to the southern shore. The third lies in the river directly above the rock bridge. And the last can be found in the center left of the southeast pond. For the first bottle, I was required to move Ursula's house to spot it. Keep that in mind if you're having a hard time tracking it down. The second bottle isn't too hard to spot, just remember it's closer to the southern shore. The third bottle is a couple of feet away from the cattails found above the rocky land bridge. This bottle was a tricky one, but 
I found that casting a little to the right of it against the rock seemed to work well. And lastly, the bottle in the southeast pond is easiest to fish out from the left hand side considering it's resting center left of the pond. Again, casting slightly to the right of this bottle seemed to do the trick. At this point, there are only five more emerald bottles to collect, and every single one of them will be found within the waters of Dazzle Beach. The first bottle can be found in the waters below Ursula's Cave, in the northern part of the biome. This bottle isn't hard to reel in, given that you can only cast from above. The second and third bottle can be found off the shores of the Dazzle Beach Island. One is located on the southeast shore, and one is located on the western shore. Both of these bottles are a bit easier to spot, thanks to the fact that the caps are slightly above the water. You can easily bring in both of these bottles by casting from the island. The fourth bottle can be found in the center of the waterway right below Dazzle Beach's only bridge. Resting in the center of the waterway, it's easy to spot and should be accessible from either side. The fifth and final bottle can be found on the western shores closer to the glade. Just head down the shore of Dazzle Beach going towards the glade. If you reach the brown rocks, you've gone too far. Now with all 16 bottles, we're ready for our next step. Go ahead and pop open your 16 emerald bottles if you haven't yet and claim the emerald slivers within. Now if these were orange pebbles, we'd be ready to make a potato. If only it were that simple. At your crafting station, under functional items, you will now see an option to create a jade crystal, and with the jade crystal in hand, we're ready for our next step in the journey. Take your newly formed jade crystal and head into the Sunlit Plateau. It's time to visit the mines once again. However, this time, we won't be visiting the Shimmering Pool. Rather, the alchemy room that we unlocked during Simba's questline. If this room is not open for you yet, you'll need to advance with Simba's quest. Within the alchemy room, you'll find a glowing jade crystal ball. With the jade crystal in your inventory, you'll be granted the ability to interact with it. And in doing so, you'll receive yet another mysterious green item known as the green seed. So, uh, are you um, getting tired of the color green yet? Because... I, I, I think I am. This is a good time to go ahead and apply the growth elixir we recommended at the beginning of this journey. You see, this seed can take a while to grow, but if you're impatient, like me, the miracle growth elixir will help make the next step much faster. Now it's time to plant and water our green seed. This particular magic seed can only grow in the forgotten lands, so don't bother trying to plant it elsewhere. Further, if you did use the Miracle Growth Elixir, double check that it's not raining before you plant your green seed. If it is, the seed will be automatically watered by the rain and you will have to wait over an hour for what comes next. Upon planting your green seed and dousing it with the Miracle Growth Elixir, you'll notice a brand new plant is ready to harvest. Lo and behold, green potato. Now we're finally ready to make the Crystalline Green Potion. With the green potato, the Jade Crystal, and an Empty Vial. You can utilize your creative magic at any crafting station to conjure up our sixth mysterious potion, the Crystalline Green Potion. But wait, we're not finished just yet. Now, with your complete potion collection, it's time to combine all of these mysterious elements into one absolutely insane super potion. With the Gleaming Gold Potion, the Raging Red Potion, Electrifying Orange Potion, Brilliant Blue Potion, Royal Purple Potion, and Crystalline Green Potion in your possession, it's finally time to craft Disney Dreamlight Valley's ultimate concoction, the legendary, fabled, mysterious Rainbow Potion. With just a single drop, this potion can bring life back to something gone cold and gray. And now, the Great Potato and Potion Mystery finally comes to an end. With your mighty Rainbow Potion in your inventory, travel through the portal and head into the dark castle. Upon entering the castle, head towards the right-hand side of the foyer. There, you will encounter a small fox turned to stone, cold and gray as the potion described. Upon interacting with the fox, you can select the powerful rainbow potion and with that, restore this mystical companion so that he may serve by your side. A true wonder of Disney magic, months of secrets, speculation, and mystery have led us all to this point. Months of work went into today's video and cracking the code of the rainbow potion. So if you'd be so kind as to leave a like on my video, it would mean the world to me. 
Also, consider subscribing for more Disney Dream Night Valley and gaming content. To continue this conversation, please feel free to follow me on Twitch or join our community Discord. I'll put the links to both in the video description down below. As always, thank you so much for your time today, and good luck decorating your valley.